So earlier this week, the Minecraft YouTuber Wilbur Suit made a tweet responding to abuse allegations made about him online, which initially felt like it came out of nowhere, as at that time nobody accused Wilbur by name. But of course, it turns out that he was accused because his ex-girlfriend who came out to tell her allegations against him on her Twitch channel purposely didn't name him. The full VOD is 30 minutes, and I'll leave it in the description below for you guys to check out in full. But for those of you who just want some quick context, here is a portion of that stream. When I hear about physical abuse, I think of hitting. I think of hitting and punching. Um, so I thought that this wasn't violent enough um, to be abuse. <laughs> uh, I thought that it was just like a constant accident that he kept hurting me, um, but he's not hitting me. And it didn't start as something that he did to hurt me. Uh, he had this habit of biting, which is so weird to me now, but he said that he had had this habit since he was a kid and even his mom said that that was true. And he said it was just affectionate and that that might have been, I mean, I think that that might have been true maybe at the start, but I also feel that I have good reason to believe that every part of it was a lie, but that's just my personal opinion. Um, and I had no problem with just biting. That isn't even the most uncommon thing um, but he did mention something early that I should have taken as a red flag. Um, and he wanted to make sure that I was okay with him biting me because he didn't want me to come back later and say that he abused me, which I thought was really weird considering he had never hurt me before. And so why would I call it abuse? And why was he thinking about that? And I thought he was being sweet, checking on me to make sure that I was still comfortable um, but I, of course I was because he hadn't hurt me and why would I think he ever would? Um, and then he did for the first time by accident. Uh, and I don't specifically remember the actual first time that he bit me too hard by accident because I didn't think that it would be significant. Um, I thought that it would only happen once and he started biting me more and more over a period of time, sort of throughout the whole relationship and... Accidents of him biting too hard and really hurting me happened more and more frequently. Um, but he always seemed genuinely sorry. And he decided that he didn't want to keep accidentally hurting me. Um, so we were going to use a safe word um, so he could learn where my limit was, where my pain tolerance ended. Uh, and saying that out loud now doesn't sound... Like, that's not very sound logic. Um, but at the time, I thought he cared about not hurting me. But in reality, it's like, why are you biting so hard? And why do you have to bite so hard? And it shouldn't be that hard of a problem to stop. Um, that shouldn't be that hard. And he disguised it as this really quirky part of our relationship and was so comfortable sharing it with his friends to the point that he would do it in front of them. He thought it was this really funny story to tell and a good bit to take my arm and bite me in front of everybody until I literally shout in pain. Um, and then I have to laugh it off because I'm so embarrassed and I don't want to cause a scene in front of all of our friends. And I'm sure everyone was a little bit uncomfortable, but as long as I was saying that it was fine, nobody really felt like they needed to be concerned and that's not anybody's fault because... I was lying. <laughs> I was lying and it wasn't fine because I would go home later and I'd tell him how uncomfortable I was, how much I didn't like being hurt all the time. And I needed him to really stop biting so hard. I didn't like it. And I tried telling him over and over again because he asked him to stop again. This time he said, this is who he is. He isn't going to change. Those were his words. He had... Now at this point, weaponized the safe word and was using it to ensure that I was hurt and on a constant basis. And he wasn't sorry anymore. Um, I couldn't even tell you the last time he had apologized for doing it anymore because now sometimes he would bite me and I would yell out the safe word because it hurt so bad and he'd clamp down even harder. And just for a second, just for good measure, before letting go. And sometimes I'd say the safe word and he'd grind his teeth down on my skin. 
And sometimes he'd smile after, like a gloating grin. And during this time, I was filled with so much anxiety all the time that I was constantly nauseous, gagging daily, on occasion throwing up because of the pit that was in my stomach. I never told him about that, though. I was going and running away quietly to throw, throw up in the toilet and rejoin our group of friends. So that is basically the situation in a nutshell, but a couple more clips from the stream went viral on Twitter. Like this one V posted on Twitter with the caption, I was watching Shelby's full VOD and found this part just insane. He really holds money and fame over everything else. Who the fuck does he think he is? Also the part where he would leave his place a mess just for her to clean it up whenever she came over. I'm speechless. And he also, he was never going to prioritize me over anything that would give him more fame or money. In fact, he said that himself. He, uh, that was exactly why he was not going to compromise at all for a solution for us to be together because he said he wanted to see how much fame and money he could get. Um, and I just thought we wanted to be together. I thought that's what we both wanted because that's what he was still saying he wanted to. Um, but then he also admitted to me that he had grown resent. Uh, he had grown to resent me. And I have to be thankful that he said that bit out loud. A lot of these bits he said out loud because that was the last push that I needed to get myself out. Another clip from Shelby's stream that blew up on Twitter was posted by Maya, where she says, Shelby talking about why she shared her story and about healing. Transcript is below and you should watch the full 30 minute VOD. Her bravery for sharing her story, so many people are warned about this person and about the signs of abuse cannot be understated. Silence has always brought me peace. And this time it feels like my silence is not keeping my peace. It's only keeping somebody else's peace. Um, and I never thought that I could be the kind of person to end up in a situation like I did. I never thought that could happen to me. And so for me, this is important because it could help anybody else see the signs sooner than I did. I believe that people like this are genuinely dangerous. I believe he is dangerous. Um, he was willing to lie. He was willing to do harm to someone he claimed to love more than anyone he has ever loved. Uh, his actions escalated. Um, and I don't think that I'll be the last person that he hurts. Uh, and I felt like sharing my story was really important to warn people. Um, I want people to see the signs that I refused to. I want you to listen to your body um, and get out as soon as possible. Tell your friends the truth and let them help you. <laughs> I, I truly feel now that my soul is so healed, um, I am light years beyond him. Uh, this was the last thing that I felt like I needed to do, that's my cat, um, before I could move forward and hopefully never talk about him ever again, outside of maybe my stories that I wanna tell about other shitty things he did anonymously mixed in with the other stories I still have of shitty things that shitty exes did because I think it's important for us to share our stories and our experiences. I think it's important for all of us to know that we deserve so much better than this. Um, and I think that if people don't want us to talk about the shitty things that they do, then they shouldn't do shitty things. Maya follows up the clip by saying, I've seen people say wait for her to name him or give proof. That is most likely never going to happen. There are so many risks with explicitly naming an abuser. Legal, monetary, fans attacking you. Don't pressure her to say his name, but don't brush all she said under the rug. Please listen to Shelby directly. And then they link a tweet from Shelby where she says, coming on Twitter only to say this. If she wanted to name him, she would. Stop saying this. It's a lie. There are a lot of reasons a victim might not name their abuser. Don't tell them it's because they don't want to. Ella responds by saying, The audacity of strangers acting as if they know someone's reasons for anything, especially something like this. You don't owe them shit. We are all so proud of you. Ainsy says, You deserve only love from people right now. Fuck anyone treating you with anything other than empathy. I love you. So for the next couple days, that was about it in regards to the situation, as nobody knew who Shelby was talking about, until Wilbert Suit confirmed it was him. In this response, he posted to Twitter where he says, In the past week, a series of allegations have 
have been made over my conduct from an ex-girlfriend. I want to emphasize that although I feel it fair to offer my perspective, this person's feelings are completely valid. I have taken my time sharing this statement as I wanted to process and respond respectfully and with the hope to gain a deeper understanding for the situation. During our relationship's final months, I regrettably became slobbish, disrespectful, and selfish. These actions caused a lot of pain to my ex-girlfriend and have since sought therapy to address these behaviors, making significant lifestyle changes to rectify my past actions. I have come to realize how much my past behavior hurt this person, but I truly compassionately believe I have made great strides from the person I once was, and I hope I can continue to grow and improve on this trajectory. The allegation of abuse, particularly in the form of biting, deeply shocked me. Throughout our relationship, I understood from our numerous conversations and text message exchanges on the subject that this behavior was consensual, playful, and reciprocally enjoyed. I truly believe those personal message exchanges reflect mutual affection and understanding. Out of respect for her, I choose not to publish them, and I emphasize my perspective is not shared to diminish or invalidate anyone's feelings. Instead, I share it in hopes that I can offer a genuine, fair, and relevant insight into my understanding of the situation. While I may perceive our interactions differently, I recognize that this person has processed and expressed feelings of hurt. I want to extend my sincerest apologies for any pain that I caused. I am fully committed to understanding and addressing her concerns going forward. I hope my perspective sheds light on this situation without distracting from its message. I am dedicated to earning and maintaining the trust of those around me, and I hope I continue to be held to these high standards I wish to attain and maintain. Will. Puns responds to Wilbur's statement by saying, saying you've been through therapy and are growing does not equal taking accountability. Downplaying your actions and discrediting the person you hurt? Shameful. The father says, a majority of this is full of ways you've claimed to have grown, but you've basically made what should be an apology of the pain you caused someone about yourself, while barely saying anything else about it. And that speaks volumes. Ainsy says, you started this off defending yourself by claiming you've changed, making it about you, then left the most simple yet important thing for last, an apology. And even then, your apology isn't an apology. You left it at, for any pain I've caused, which lacks any accountability. Crumb responds to Wilbur by saying, did you even think before sending this? Have you ever thought at all? Cosmo says, this is actually very disappointing. The fact that you ignored a safe word multiple times and bitten harder when she said it hurt is terrible. Nicole says, the behavior was playful, yet you pressed on her old bruises to cause more pain. The situation was playful, yet you ignored her safe wording and in fact bit harder when she safe worded. You are a disgusting person and this is a pathetic attempt at an apology. Little Tay says, narcissism at its finest. Trip responds with a picture of Colleen Ballinger doing her horrible ukulele apology. GE Vid says, chat GPT ah, apology. Noah Morris says, correct me if I'm wrong, but why do I feel like Minecraft YouTubers that are connected to the whole dream space have a higher rate slash tendency of getting into girl slash relationship drama on Twitter? And speaking of dream, he actually responds to Wilbur, showing these two images of him writing out. She said she withdrew consent using a safe word, and he would frequently intentionally bite down harder afterward to the point that she would scream. Even isolated from everything else, that is clearly abuse. While reading this, I was waiting to see you talk about that issue, to say anything at all, only to finish reading and find out that you didn't acknowledge it once. I really don't understand how you thought this was accountability, or an apology, or even an informative statement. This did serve as confirmation she was talking about you, which I'm glad to have. Wilbur, you take accountability for being slobbish, disrespectful, and selfish, and it seems those are things you acknowledge as past problems, while overshadowing the physically abusive actions, and claiming to be completely reformed now, you seem to truly think you did nothing abusive, and this statement is built on that foundation. You are being dishonest with yourself, or dishonest with us or both. You describe these acts as consensual, without refuting her complete revocation of consent, through your agreed upon safe word, a word set with the purpose of explicitly ending consent. She trusted you. With this safe word as a boundary, you shattered that trust. Therapy won't help if you seriously describe your abusive actions as playful, affectionate, and especially consensual. Your therapist can't read your mind and know you were being dishonest. Shelby was afraid to say your name due to your dedicated audience, and this wasn't acknowledged either. As someone who at times shared an audience with you, this is severely disappointing. She had a reason to be afraid to say your name, but you shouldn't have been afraid to say hers. Shelby, I'm sorry you had to go through this. I'm sorry that you felt scared about public support, and I hope this gives you some hope that the world overall is full of good people. I'm sorry that you will forever be affected by this. A victim of domestic violence. As a victim of domestic violence, I was scared to ever speak out, in fear of not being taken seriously or believed. It's incredibly encouraging to see so many people express support and uplift your story and message, and I believe this can help prevent 
prevent many future situations like yours. I'm sorry if any events involving me or my audience in the past contributed at all to your anxiousness about coming forward in this community, and I hope this serves as a reminder to everybody that at the end of the day, the community and creators are united when it comes to the most important things. The truth. What's right and wrong. Speaking for those who can't. Uplifting the voices of those that might otherwise go unheard. Standing up for what is right. And speaking out against those that do wrong. Your story you told will help so many young people see signs of toxicity and abuse before it's too late for them. Thank you for being brave. So after all of this, Tommy Init tweets out, I will address everything when I'm ready, but in the meantime, please send your love and support to Shelby. Plain Rock says, I blame Minecraft. That guy Connor says, take your time man, don't feel rushed. Whenever you're ready. Alyssa responds to Tommy by saying, Tommy is like the one person that I wouldn't judge if he decided to simply not say anything about this. Moon quote tweets Tommy and says, I don't like him, but shut the fuck up. You were allowed to fucking feel empathy for the boy. It doesn't matter if you like him or not. Zhang Yong says, Wilbur suit garbage apology. Fuck you. Ukulele. Mari says, Apology so bad that the whole Minecraft community came together to say fuck Wilbur. And then they show knights at a round table, consisting of QSMP stands, Dream stands, Hermit Twitter, DSMP, Tubbo, SBI stands, every Minecraft YouTuber, Dream, X Minecraft YouTuber stands, Bilzo, and AMZ all pointing their swords towards fuck Wilbur. Tucson tweets out this video recording of Wilbur's Discord and says, holy shit, Wilbur suits Discord. And in it, we can see that a bunch of his moderators and other important people in his Discord server changing their status to fuck Wilbur suit. Demo says, that feeling when male manipulator music I listen to turns out to be made by a male manipulator, showing a picture of someone straight face in the caption, my sincerest reaction. Shelby reacts to all of this when she says, I could not have imagined what I would wake up to today. My ex pretending he thought I enjoyed being hurt and all of my friends immediately coming to my defense. The support has brought me to tears. I don't even know what to say. I'll be back. I'll just be taking a little time. And for the record, I don't accept the apology. Jack Septicai responds by saying, I'm so sorry to hear about everything you've been through. Hope you can heal from this and move on positively. Carl Jacobs says, take your time. Iret says, it was so brave of you to speak out. I know it couldn't have been easy. Too often people don't see that they are being mistreated in a relationship. It is people like you coming forward about your own experiences that help them see that they deserve better. Thank you. Tricky Eyes a Birdie says, Love you so much, Shelby. You are a ray of sunshine wherever you go, and never fail to bring joy to everyone around you. You don't deserve any of this trash behavior. No one does. You were strong as heck for talking about this pain. In addition to what Shelby said on her alt Twitter account, which is what we just read off, she also goes on her main Twitter account to post a long statement about this with the caption, Thank you for listening. I've thought a lot about what I would say when I come back. Firstly, I want to say the biggest thank you to everyone showing their support. I've never felt so loved and cared for, and I've never seen so many communities come together to have somebody's back like this. I'm so proud of everyone taking such a powerful stance against these actions. I never could have imagined this response. While I didn't do this for myself, through sharing my story, I have healed more parts of myself I had no idea were still pained. I'd like to address the apology. Quite frankly, I've never seen an apology so self-centered. It seems to purposely misconstrue the issue I have very clearly laid out. My issue was not with being bit, it was with being hurt. And to vaguely apologize for any hurt, while knowing we needed a safe word because I was being hurt so often by accident, and I continue to be hurt daily, is incredibly disrespectful. But not more disrespectful than not even saying my name. I believe I am referred to as ex-girlfriend, so if you don't know who he's talking about, you might not find out what he did. This is not how you take accountability. Not only are there no DMs whatsoever where it expressed that I enjoyed being hurt by my partner, to imply there was consent in text over an issue that entirely happened in person, where every conversation about it happened in person, is ridiculous. He knows how often I asked for him to stop hurting me, that I don't like it, and that I didn't like being covered in bruises all the time. Entirely why he switched to biting my legs, so no one would think I look abused, but he continued to hurt me. Either he didn't take my pleas for it to stop seriously, or he didn't hear them at all. I felt lost for so long, truly losing myself in this relationship. I abandoned my personal morals, neglected friends, and lied for this person. With every time I spoke up being ignored, I shrank. I lost my fight. I stayed locked in a house I had no key for, and didn't even try to leave anymore. People ask why we stay, and it's so hard to explain ourselves because we've abandoned all our reasoning. I wasn't safe anymore with this person, but I couldn't see that. I loved him, and he told me he'd tried to stop hurting me. I'm deeply saddened by how many more friends were hurt by his actions, but I'm so thankful to everyone doing the absolute most in making sure I've been okay over the last few days. Thank you to everyone who's reached out to support me. Thank you for hashtag Shubby Support Squad. Every day I read your messages and see your art, and it makes me feel truly like the bravest girl in the world. I think the good that comes 
comes out of victims sharing their experiences so others can learn and avoid similar pain, or to come to terms with ways they were mistreated, is the most important thing in this moment. You cannot treat people this way without consequence. You cannot pretend you don't know the harm you cause. You cannot pretend going to therapy fixes all past mistakes. All of the love that has been shared for me over the past few days is for every victim of abuse. Our lives are forever changed by these experiences. I now struggle with memory problems and extreme anxiety, and it may be a while before I feel fully like myself, whoever she is. But I know I have my spark back. Please remember how brave and how strong you are. We shouldn't expect to be silent when we are mistreated. And after that statement, a bunch of other YouTubers came out in support of her in the replies. But there's also a couple people who were skeptical about Shelby's claims and more supportive of Wilbur, and we will cover all of those Twitter reactions, both negative and positive, in part two of this series. So if you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe to this channel with notifications on. And in the meantime, let me know what your thoughts on the situation are, whether it be positive or negative towards any given person, in the comment section below. But with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in another video.